Hey everyone and welcome to part two of Behind the Design where I'm showing you how I created this app design and case study. If you missed the first part of the series, I'd recommend going back and watching it before moving forward to part two. And also if you haven't seen the case study that I'm referring to in this Behind the Design series, you can go and check that out in the link in the description below. All right, with that stuff out of the way, what we're gonna be talking about today is writing your discussion guide as well as other tips for conducting your research interviews. So I'd recommend putting together this discussion guide that we're about to go through while you are recruiting. And that way, whenever you get to the end of your recruitment and you're ready to reach out to people, you're already ready to start conducting those interviews right away. So like any good outline, this discussion guide is going to have three main parts, the introduction, the discussion, and the conclusion. And the introduction and conclusion are actually important, which is why I'm including them here. The introduction is where you're going to introduce yourself and um, you know, make sure that the person's really comfortable with you. Kind of break the ice, talk about um, kind of what's going on with them, how they're doing. You can just kind of set the stage for how this interview is gonna be. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I wanted my interview to be very much a conversation and a very casual conversation like you would have with a friend. And so that is why I spent a good amount of time just kind of getting comfortable with the person before I jump into the questions. And while you're doing that, it's also important to let them know or to ask them if they'd be comfortable if you record the session. I would definitely recommend doing that so that you don't have to take notes throughout the session and you can be engaged in the conversation. So you can let them know that that's why you're doing it, that you won't be showing these clips to anyone else and you'll just be using them for your own research. And you just want to make sure that they know what to expect. You can kind of outline what you're going to be asking them about. And if there's anything, any tasks that they need to complete, then you can let them know then and make sure to let them know that after the session is when you will be compensating them. And then as you get into the meat of the discussion guide, you're going to break out your discussion into different sections and topics. So for me, the first one I wanted to start with was the most general one, being their home environment. And the reason that I go general to specific throughout my discussion guide is because I didn't wanna give away to the person that I was speaking with that I am doing an essential oil diffuser app. Because then if they have that in the back of their mind, they might um, kind of tweak their answers subconsciously and talk more about aromatherapy than they actually would if we were just talking about what they do in their home, their self-care, and things like that. So you wanna start really general and get more specific towards the end of the conversation. So for me, my general topics were home environment, so I asked them a bunch of questions about that. Then I moved into their relationship with mindfulness, uh, wellness, tech, and self-care. Then I started to get into their experience with their current essential oil diffuser. And lastly, I talked with them about how they feel about an app or technology in general facilitating that experience with their diffuser. And so I obviously had tons of questions within those different topics that I went through. With some cases, I had to ask a lot of questions and with other people, they really kind of just spoke and the conversation flowed really nicely and I didn't have to prompt them quite as much. Both can be really helpful, but it's great to have a ton of questions outlined in case people um, start to answer with one word answers or just yes or no. You wanna keep asking why um, if they start to do that and it's just great to have a ton of questions planned out in case the conversation gets a little bit slow. And lastly, with the conclusion, you want to ask them if they have anything that they want to add that they think you should have asked about, but you didn't. You want to ask them if they have any questions for you. And then if they're interested, you can tell them what your um, project is all about after they've answered all the questions. Um, if they're super curious, then it, I think it's great to let them know what you're researching for and usually they'll be super interested in it and they'll ask you more questions once um, you start talking about your project. And of course at the end, 
along with compensating them, you want to make sure you thank them and really get across that you appreciate their time and their willingness to open up and have this conversation with you. Okay, now we're gonna get into some interview tips. So before this, I really had not done foundational interviews before. I had done some user interviews um, and some user tests, but I had never just had these types of conversations with people up front in order to kind of guide my um, project in the very beginning. And so these are some things that I learned both from my mentor and just throughout the experience doing these interviews. I learned that you should not be afraid of silence. So I'm someone who gets a little bit nervous during conversations and tends to fill the void with my own voice. And this is something that you do not want to do in an interview. And that's because, of course, you want them to talk. And if there's a little silence, then that's totally okay. You can see if they are going to add to what they said, or you can just let the silence pass and then move on to the next question. My second tip here is to not ask leading questions. And this is really obvious. This is like the number one rule of research, but Whenever you're coming up with your discussion guide, really look at every single question you came up with and see if there's a way that you can ask it in a little bit more of an unobtrusive way. And what I mean by that is you don't wanna make any assumptions when you're asking these questions. You wanna start with the very basic question, the most open-ended, and see what they give you and then ask questions based on their answer. So you don't want to put any words in their mouth. You don't want to assume that they feel a certain way or that they have a certain experience. You want to get what their feeling is, what their experience is, and then ask why and ask more clarifying questions about that. So here's an example. You don't want to ask a question like, would you want an app to remind you when it's time to clean your diffuser? A better question would be, what kinds of reminders would you find helpful from a smart diffuser app? And then, once they start answering that question, then you can get a little bit more specific if you want by asking, would this type of notification help? Would this type of reminder help? But I think it's important to get their first reaction to the more general question first and then go off of that. And lastly, I know I mentioned this a couple times, but you definitely want to keep asking why, especially if you have a research participant who's answering in yes or no answers or just answering in one or two words and not going in depth. It's okay to keep asking why. A lot of times in UX research, it's not as important what a person does, but why they do it. So their motivations and their beliefs and their expectations are really what counts. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I really hope you found that helpful. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to be talking about synthesizing your data and findings from your research.